All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the fourth match of round one, which means we are already in the second half of round one. This, today's match will be our 413 seed match between MT and Kakinu. And uh, we will get the race underway soon once they are both ready. Oh, this. This part of the commentary is always a little bit awkward. Just waiting for these two racers to ready up. Hello, chat. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Looks like... Akinu is at the title screen. I'm so sorry if that's not how it's pronounced, by the way. What I did was I went to Google Translate and I typed in Kakinu into Portuguese and listened to how the robot said it. And the robot said Kakinu, so just hoping that's how it's pronounced. Akinu? Okay. Running just the slightest bit late, but it's okay. That's part of the content. What is this MT guy doing? Gonna play the literal longest level of the game before the race. It's not enough time, true. Fair enough. Oh, missing the egg shot. This is a bad omen. Looks like MT is gonna flub about 30 minutes away. Oh, man. This is a rough one. It's okay because MT is not even trying. There's no way. I wonder if MT is going to go for bucket skip. The Piers Hakinu is no longer on the race room. I wonder what happened. Yeah, MT's all I got time. Oh, clean. I wish I could do it like that. MT going the 100% route, getting those stars. <laughs> Missed the flower, though. And some red coins. Of course, it's my commentary match where everyone is floundering and everything is going wrong. All right, Kakinu appears to be ready. We're just waiting for MT to do this 4-4 four four now. Is this one hand? <laughs> oh, he's doing one hand controller. That's actually crazy. What the heck? That's actually so impressive. Hakeem, you apparently about to do some practice of his of his own. Going to 4-7, hopefully to, to practice some chicken, Baxter. Imagine MT... MT wins one-handed. <laughs> oh, MT going into the worst stage. Love to see it. Actually, no, 5E is worth. If a warpless, this is the worst stage. Crispy, mod check.
<laughs> we're, yeah, we're waiting for no reason. And he just has to ready up on the um, the race uh, race time. Oh, Kakeen, you skipping the chickens. I mean, I'm one to talk. I totally, I totally escaped me to go for chicken back there, and I'm low key upset about it. Lost about three thousand swag points from it, but that's okay. Oh, the gate hack giving a little bit of trouble. This gate hack, I don't know why, but this gate hack is always really rough for me too. This is much harder than the one in two four. For like, li I don't understand why. It makes no sense. I think it's because you have to upshoot the egg like earlier than you think you do. MT having a cleaner 5 3 than I usually get. <laughs> Assuming this is also one handed. Let's go, Kakin, you getting the gate hack on the leg. Never mind, I'm not gonna say how many tries it was. That's rude. Fluttering over the gap. Respectable. MT, yeah, crazy race. MT with a five level lead right now. Ooh, the, the swag backwards jumps. MT still not ready on the race time. <laughs> I need to learn the optimal way to do the skiing section. I avoid all the rocks at all costs because I don't want to risk death in 5-3. Oh my god, excuse me. Oh, MT resetting? Is this... Is this where it finally begins? <laughs> How can you cheating right now? Let's go! Oh man, that was a clean auto scroll skip. It's always so wonderful to get that on like just a couple tries. Always such a wonderful feeling. And then you die to the rocks afterwards because they're jank. Oh man, both races are ready. Let's go! We're finally starting at long last. And the countdown has begun. The race will begin in about 20 seconds. You'll see it in about 20 seconds, that is. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. They're gonna, it'll take a bit for the stream to catch up, but they should be starting now. All right. Come on, stream. Let's go, it's begun. Finally, all right. So, Yoshi's Island, wonderful game created by none other than Nintendo themselves. So it seems that both of them are playing on Japanese. Kakinyu a little bit of a struggle on the text box. Japanese doesn't save that much over English. It's like, at most, like, no one knows exactly how much it saves, but it's at most like seven or eight seconds over the whole run. It's usually just, in, it's just in those, uh, those text boxes. And doing a little bit of mashing still. Let's go. All right, MT going into 1-1 after switching to Hasty. Kakinyu in the lead. Let's go. You love to see it. All right, so 1-1. One, one. It's a pretty pretty simple stage, you know. There are a couple ways to do it. Uh, we'll see what MT goes for. MT going for the normal strat. All right, respectable. Yeah, there are several ways to do it. 
there was a, a recently a new strat that was discovered by Poor that saves like half a second that I personally think that every runner should learn. But uh, love to see it. All right, going into one dash two. Oh man, one two, one of every speedrunner's favorite levels in the game with the best skip of all time. <laughs> Uh, it saves about, what, like 25 seconds or so? It skips about two-thirds of 1-2. And it amounts to, uh, throwing a little flower dude at the wall. And what it does is, um... It, like, I think it just clips into the wall. And then you, like, are able to bounce on it. It's so weird. You're about to see it in about, like, 10 seconds or so. It's crazy. MT accidentally shooting it in the star cloud. Kakinu getting it like, what was that, like third try probably? I didn't, I wasn't really looking. MT struggling a bit. Is he, is MT actually playing one-handed? Kakinu in the lead right now. Going into 1-3. My personal fifth favorite level in Yoji's Island. Earlier today, I, cre I created a list of my top five favorite levels. So after this, you're gonna know my top five favorite levels. Oh my god. <laughs> MT is such a <laughs> No freaking way. Unbelievable. He's currently behind though, so he's gonna, gonna have to make up some ground. Does MT do 5-4 skip? One-handed? Alright, so uh, Kakinyu, you see Kakinyu jumping over slopes, and you're about to see MT do that too. Um... The reason for that is because slopes in this game slow you down because this game is very well designed, and it's it's just it's just really cool how the, how slopes do that. They slow you down, and it's really infuriating. But it adds to the challenge of this game. This is a hard game, and I believe MT will also go red coinless probably. Nope, never mind. All right, so um, most most top runners go red coinless coinless in this level. And that saves about half a second over collecting a red coin at that spot that MT just got one. Because the score tally screen takes half a second to to tally up the first one, and then all subsequent ones take one frame each. Alright, Kakinyu going into 1-4, the first boss level of the game. Featuring a really cool RNG fireball. We'll see how Kakinyu fares. Nice. Didn't get trolled by the fire. We'll see. If, does MT also do uh, pipe glitches? With one hand? That's, that would be kind of crazy. I mean, I guess that wouldn't be too bad, actually. If you really think about it. Kakinyu pushing the pot. What you can do is you can shoot the pot off screen and the pot actually it spawns above the bridge. So if you shoot it off screen, it'll just break. It'll fall and break. Because this game is well designed. It's a really cool strat. We'll see if MT does it. Oh, wait. Oh, a little bit too late. Alright, Kakinyu entering the first boss against Bert the Bashful, and aka uh, the dude with the pants, and uh, we don't want him to have pants as Seuss said <laughs> during the first or the second match, so we shoot eggs at him, and that somehow makes his pants fall down. He's gonna look like a fool with his pants on the ground soon. Oh, so close. Oh my gosh, that is that is so close to doom. All right, so Kakinyu entering 1-5, the first of a, only a few. There are only a couple auto scrollers in the game, but the auto scrollers that are in the game are pretty dang long. There's only like 5 in the game. 
And I don't know about you guys, but what I like to do during 1-5 uh, is I like to guess the color of all the flower enemies. So they can either be yellow or white. And as far as I know, it's a 50-50 chance. But uh, we'll see. Well, I'm going to guess for Kakinyu, it's going to be white, white, yellow. That's my prediction for Kakinyu. Nice hand cam for MT. There's not much to talk about. I really should have I, I really should have eaten before commentating. Speaking of eating, uh <laughs> if you let chat, let's ask a question to chat. Chat, if you were to choose one enemy in Yoshi's Island, including bosses, to eat, which one would you eat? I think I, I was thinking about this earlier, and my answer would be uh Gusties, because I hate them. <laughs> I think Takinu's first flower was yellow. So I think I can't I can't remember what I guess. I think that's white, white, yellow. But I'm currently and this one's white, so I'm currently one for two for Kakinu's flowers. And yeah, Kak uh, <laughs> freaking uh the gusties. I mean the game literally asks what do gusties taste like in 2-3. So, it's a mystery unsolved. You'd eat a crazy daisy? Me too, I kinda hate one, I kinda hate one too, Skip. You'll eat the fuzzy, oh, I didn't even think about that. Oh, that would be a good time. That would be a really good time. Would I eat fuzzies? Absolutely. And the last flower is yellow, so I was two for three on Kakinyu's flowers. Not bad. I get two for three pretty often. I got my very first ever three for three flower guest today in Seuss's stream. It was it, it was awesome. I'm gonna buy a lottery ticket soon. MT not going red coinless. <laughs> Getting the the swag red coins. Losing about half a second. Oh, I didn't even notice Kakinu got a flower. Never mind, they're they're uh, it's a wash for one five. As uh, some people say, I don't, I personally I never understood why people call it a wash, but oh no, that's just me. All right, Kakinu, I need to stop saying all right. Kakinu entering one dash six. Uh, pretty, pretty standard level. Nothing really super duper fancy. You're gonna see if he does a pipe glitch. Nah, okay, so there's a pipe glitch. Uh, it's called a pipe glitch because you glitch, you glitch the pipe, kinda. And it's basically just jumping and going down the pipe at the exact same time. And it skips the going down the pipe animation and saves about half a second. Checking you getting a little bit of damage there. Nothing too major though. By the way, I didn't see. Does can you play on patient? I didn't. I didn't see that. Or is is he a hasty player? I wasn't paying attention. Bad commentator. <laughs> Is he patient? Alright, that's that's pretty crazy. There are a lot more patient players than I was expecting. Oh man, Kakinyu entering the wonderful, the oh-so-wonderful and well-regarded 1-7, aka Fuzzy Land. Touch fuzzy, get dizzy. Let's see if Kakinyu gets through fuzzyless. It's always a little bittersweet to go through, uh, to go through fuzzyless. Fuzzies, whenever you, uh, whenever you run into them or eat them, you're about to see it right now. You get a little drunk and you, things get a little wacky. And that usually, that loses about quarter of a second 
so about 15 frames uh, per fuzzy that you hit. Oh, MT getting a little bit stuck there. Let's go. Oh, man, I love fuzzies. Going into 1-8, uh, we have one of the best designed bosses of all time. I mean, <laughs> it's just such a fun boss fight, right? Salvo the Slime is the boss of this castle, and he is very finicky. He's, it's very, very tough to get a good Salvo. But we'll see how these runners fare. Very, very cool egg shot. That's usually just what I do. I do a little bit of a safer shot. Getting the key to go through the key door. And then we get this little cookie. This, uh, that I, for some reason, used to always mix up with donuts. I don't know why. I used to always think that was a donut, even though it literally has no hole in it. I'm just dumb, I guess. All right, so we are entering the boss on Kakinu's side. And it is possible to one cycle this boss fight, but most runners go for the more reliable two cycle, I believe. I actually no, I'm pretty sure every single runner does. I mean, I think one cycle is only viable for ILs probably. Oh, Kakinu getting a little bit of a rough, a little bit of a rough uh, slime RNG. <laughs> oh no, is Kakinu about to die? Oh no! Oh my gosh, that was so close. The toadies were on screen. Kakinu's struggling, oh no. Oh, <laughs> that was so close, that was so scary. And Kakinu narrowly evading death from the boss, and MT catching up a little bit. Alright, so what are we going to talk about during these world transitions? Because we have about like 40 seconds to kill or so. So how, yeah, how's everyone's day going? Personally, I had two nightmares last night, but that's not, not anything too major. Did I say 40 seconds? Oh my god, I'm literally- I am so bad at estimating. I am so bad at estimating. That was like, what, 20 seconds probably? I've never actually timed how long those, those cutscenes are. Alright, so Kakinu in 2-1. And we are going to see a very cool trick known as a pipe glitch, which I alluded to earlier. Right here, probably. Or at least, yeah, there we go. So, you jump, and you enter the pipe at the exact same time. And that, it, in most cases, it just skips the pipe entering animation. But in this case, um, because Yoshi was in the next loading zone, it just transports Yoshi into the next area. And saving a, a whopping probably like two seconds. Very, very amazing time save. This is the second of, I think five? I, I think it's five auto scores in this game. And we are approaching the end of it. It's a pretty quick one. Some clean movement coming here from Kakinu. Who is still in the lead over MT. But MT's catching up though.
All right, time to talk about 2 2. Oh boy, 2 2. I mean, this is a very love or hate stage. I personally am on the hate end of the spectrum of this of this stage. Some people love it, some people hate it. It's a it's a really hard stage. It is very much not easy. It's like the first like really hard level, I'd say, of the run. If you were to exclude one two skip, that is. So are these no, neither of these runners are going for the intentional damage. So there is a strat that pretty much every runner does. Basically, uh, you intentionally get hit so that one of the toadies they'll come flying down and that allows you to eat them. Oh, MT going for the alternative strat, I think, with the shy guy. And what you would do is climb up these bridges and you will just kind of do this. Using two extended flutters, you will fly over the post and skip about 25 second long. Oh no, empty getting stuck a little bit. There we go. Both the runners getting a little bit stuck, but that's fine because both of them cleared the gap. And that saves about 25 seconds or so, or 30 seconds, something like that. And go on to this last screen, or not last screen, this, this second to last screen. Uh, you enter this little maze section, and casually this maze can be pretty rough. But, since we are speedrunners, and we know life this game, we kind of have the whole maze memorized. So it, it's not really a maze if you know how to get through the maze. It's still impossible? Fair enough, it is still very much impossible. It's just, you gotta get clean movement through the maze. This race is actually really cool. Oh, Kakin, you're getting a little tripped up. Maybe, perhaps forgetting where to go. Egging the piranha. Egging the piranha. And... Throwing an egg away. <laughs> Kakin, you're going right under the goal ring. That's some pretty, pretty cool swag, I'd say. Maybe like half a swag point. There isn't that much to talk about in 2-3, it's just kind of a cool looking level. But uh, th these are the Gusties. This title is called, or this level is called, What's Gusties Taste Like? And it's a question that I too wonder, because I would love to eat these things because I hate them with a burning passion. They're probably my least favorite enemy in the game, because their hitbox makes literally no sense. Why is, why is the hitbox like a third of the, like not even a third, probably like 10% of the enemy. Cool neutral from MT. Cool neutral again. And some pretty cool egg shots to get through this foam section. And we will see the first mandatory- well not- Technically you can skip it. 100% you skip it. But in Warpless we take the baby Mario because it is actually faster than Yoshi is. Gotta get some clean movement through the rest of the stage. Was that a perfect jump from MT? <laughs> I think that was a perfect jump. MT, I didn't even notice, but MT is now in the lead. 2-4 <clears throat> has some pretty interesting tricks I want to talk about. On the second screen, you're going to see two pretty cool maneuvers called a gate hack and a perfect flutter, respectively. And the gate hack can be a little bit, a little bit tricky at times, but it's not really, not really too big of a deal. The boss of this castle is Bigger Boo, a very creative name, I'd say. I think that's just his name. I think it's just Bigger Boo. And you are about to see a gate hack. Maybe does MT do the gate hack? Oh. Messing up a little bit. Oh no. Oh, that didn't work? What? 
Jank game. All right, cool. Fourth try for MT. Not bad. You're always pretty satisfied to not have to go back to get more eggs. And the first try, perfect flutter for MT. I don't know how many frames window that is, but it's it's some amount of frames. <laughs> it depends on the perfect flutter. Kakinyu, not very- oh no! Oh, close call for MT. Kakinyu, only about a screen behind. Collected some eggs for the very egg-intensive boss fight. Three, I think? Yeah, sounds about right. Bigger boo, as most boos are, do not activate, like, they're, they, they, they don't... Oh my god, what am I trying to say? You can only hit them if you are facing away from them. So we just kind of rub against this wall a bit and do what is probably the easiest boss fight in the game, I'd say. Sometimes you can get trolled by the bats, but they're usually not really that much of an issue. Cool freeze frame from MT. This is the part where Volpe types 2-5, my beloved, in the chat. Fair enough. I mean, 2-5 is actually my second favorite level in the game. So, I, I do really love 2-5. It's a very clean, just... Just pure platforming. Nothing... It's, it's, it's just hold right, you just go through the level. Go, go, go. You can do a shell jump there, but it doesn't save that much time. I go for it because I'm, I'm a Mario Maker player, and I have to do shell jumps. I am legally bound to. Kakinyu opting for the extended flutter strat. MT getting a little bit of trouble. Never mind, I just don't understand the strat, I guess. MT going for the alternative Shy Guy Bounce strat. Normally you would egg that phone, but MT is using one hand, so I don't blame him for going over the phone. The phone can be a little bit treacherous because there's there's death right by it. So if you kind of miss aim your egg shot, you can kind of get a little bit... You can fold your doom a little bit. Okay, so now I think world the late world 2 is a good time to talk about eggs. Eggs in this game are really strange in that, um... So what they do... So Yoshi's Island is an old game. It takes time... It, it takes time to load things at times. And... Uh, this can cause some really cool things such as... Uh, despawning things or very cool lag. MT screwing up a little bit of an egg shot there. And in 2.7 we're gonna set up a sprite over overload glitch. I'll talk about a little bit more when we get there. But we just want we just want as many eggs as we can generally throughout the game. We want as many eggs as we can, but exactly as many eggs as we, as we need. We don't want to have too many eggs because that can cause some problems and also makes levels load a little bit slower. It's not too huge of a time loss on in terms of the the loading times though. And uh, usually, you want to exit this level with about two to four eggs. MT having a little bit of trouble with this dude over here. Alright, so in 2-7, we're going to do the Sprite Overflow glitch. And that will despawn two bullet bill blasters that will normally be spawned in between like a little crevice in the wall. And if you just despawn them, you can just go through the wall. And that saves about seven seconds. So what MT is doing right now is he is grabbing a big egg and he's shuffling through his egg so that he can shoot this big egg at the ground. And stars in this game have the top priority in terms of sprites to spawn or yeah sprites to spawn because obviously if you de if you can't get all the stars you can't 100% the game 
so so the so the developers made it so that the stars must be spawned no matter what i believe i don't know the exact technical details and i'm not going to pretend that i do oh, khaki and you struggling with the despawn a little bit so you're going to see the intended strat right here despawning both the doors actually that's a little strange i didn't know you could despawn the doors but not the bullet bill blast oh no uh oh oh that's unfortunate death from kakinu yeah those falling platforms have a tendency to eat your jump because this game is well designed Oh my god, that was so tight. Can we get some cleans in the chat for that egg shot? That was crazy. I don't know how we jumped over that tap, those tap taps. I actually did not know that you could jump over three, those three tap taps. I thought you needed to have like two. <laughs> Empty and exiting the stage with five eggs because two eight. We're gonna need a lot of eggs in two eight. Two eight. Has, is a very egg intensive level. Two eight is a very treacherous level for new runners. Definitely, it was. It is definitely one of the hardest stages to get good at in the entire game. That is. Mt taking the swag green platform for a little bit of a ride. Oh. Dang, these flutters are clean, though. Nice flutters from MT. Practicing for 5-4 skip, probably. And we're about to see another pipe glitch. <laughs> Takes a couple tries sometimes, but that still saves time, I believe. And this next room is where you will see all these eggs being used. And it, it's, it's actually, it saves, like, way more time than you would think it does. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Whatever, yeah, just just cut your losses, man. Just go with five eggs. And oh, he's not doing the egg shots. Okay. Wow. Okay. So this is the intended strategy. You're supposed to just slowly push this pot along the bridge here, and you grab the key. And you make a little bit of a rendezvous back to the the old section. I don't even know how that's how you use the word rendezvous. I don't know, I speak English. Not weirdies. No shot guy out of the pipe because he didn't have enough egg slots. Maybe we'll see Kakinu do the egg shots. Ooh, getting a little bit hit there. Nice. See these egg shots? They really speed up the process. Like, way more than you would think they do. Oh, MT with the frame perfect jump! Wow! The frame perfect jump with one hand, that's insane. Is that gonna work? I think that's maybe good. Oh, we're gonna have to realign a little bit. Huh? Wait, hold on. What was that on the MT screen? <laughs> How do you do that? He entered the door while face while ducking. That was weird. I don't know how to do that. I didn't even know you could do that. He's not even using his thumb though. He's using like his middle finger or something like that. All right, so we are entering the boss against Roger the Potted Ghost. Can we get some pot friends in the chat? Pot friend. Roger is my friend. Most of the time, that is. There is a setup we're going to see. Yeah, MT doing a little bit of a jumping setup to make the flames go out of the way. And it's another pretty easy boss. Nothing too f super fancy. All right, so what are we going to talk about in this this world this another world transition which as I said earlier is 40 seconds. And as we all know, the commentator is always right.
This one's like a hundred seconds. Yeah, this one takes a while. MT about to enter a an extremely problematic world. World 3 is commonly regarded as one of the hardest worlds, especially for new runners, because there's a, there are many, many things that can go wrong in World 3. Also one of the worst worlds in the game. Unless you're Zeus, I don't know. All right, so 3-1, we are entering my fourth favorite level in the game. And it's another, it's pretty similar to 2-5, just jumping. Just jumping and running. Oh, missing a little, missing a jump a little bit. That was a close one, though. This is a pretty hard. This is a pretty hard level to get good at. This section right. Oh no, MT. This section right here you're seeing right now is like really, really hard. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> MT dying in three one. And that will. Catch Kakin you up a little bit. It's okay. We love three one. We want. We just wanted to see three one again. <laughs> Fluttering to make sure he makes the platform this time. A wise decision. Nice! Not dying to the piranha this time. Monkeys can be pretty infuriating. More so in the uh, the back half of this world. First half, it's they're not really too dangerous. But they can get a little bit infuriating in like 3-5 and 3-7. We are now entering... Is 3-2 the shortest level in the game? I don't know. Maybe besides 1-2. 3-2 is like the shortest level in the game. It's a very quick stage. Not a lot Not a lot to do. Other than, than some pretty cool egg shots. I've never actually timed to see how long the levels are. What's he doing? Oh, wait, I think he I think he meant to tongue one of them. There's some vertical camera manipulation you can do here. Looks like MT didn't quite nail it, but nothing, nothing too huge. Hey, hey, hey I mean, I don't pay attention. I don't pay attention to like the amount of time I take. I only care about the time saved and the time loss. <laughs> MT making pretty quick work of 3-2. And we will now be entering another love or hate stage that I happen to be on the hate end, end of the spectrum for. 3-3. Another one of my least favorite levels in the game. There's a pretty cool trick you can do in 3-3. I don't know if MT is going to go for it. I mean, I mean, based on what I've seen so far from this, this guy's gameplay, I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for it. It's this time save about, like, what, 7 seconds or so? So, like, not enormous, but definitely, definitely meaningful and makes a pretty big difference at times. It will be on this screen right here that MT is entering right now, and you basically, you, you skip a helicopter. Normally, you would go over to the right. And is he gonna get it? Oh, he's actually going the intended route, okay. 
What you do is you grab a monkey, and then you just flutter over to where the hole is. You spit out the monkey at the wall, so that it's kind of just on the floor, laying. And then you do a, a jump onto it while ducking, and you can fit just barely into the little crevice that he just flew into with the helicopter. Pretty cool trick. I don't like it very much, but it's a pretty it's a pretty cool looking trick. Empty entering the best section of the game. <laughs> Very cool section right here. Ooh, that was swift. That bubble right there can despawn a lot. That bubble with the submarine. Nah, surely you can. I can almost guarantee you can. You might just have to use a lot of fingers. Ooh, that was a that was a pretty clean jump onto the fish. Oh no, the fish! Yeah, these fish can be really infuriating at times. MT nailing the frog shot. And, ooh, missing the monkey. It's okay, though. Just making another egg and going into 3-4 with the coolest boss in the game. Totally. Everyone's favorite boss fight. That can you struggling a little bit, but it's fine. Oh, no. The fish got both of them. Oh, that's so sad. I usually jump like really early off that bridge just to make sure the fish can't hit me. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, so I think MT is going to go for the the star optimization in this level. So this level and maybe a couple other levels, but this is the main one where you do this. Uh, you want to max out your star counting, which is 30. You want 30 stars this level because there is a required mid ring that you cannot avoid. So what runners do is they, simply put, they just max out the star counter. And most of the stars come from this mid ring that you're about to see on MT screen. And the next room with two crabs. You can get a lot of stars from these crabs because whenever you, whenever an egg ricochets off of two walls or just ricochets twice, it will turn into a red egg. And when red eggs hit enemies, they will turn into two stars. And normally you want to avoid mid rings and stars, but this is the exception because you, you're about to see, he even tried. You, you cannot avoid that mid ring. <laughs> And also, stars lose frames on the, t on the score tally screen, and you don't want that. Frames are nice and handy. Entering the boss fight with Prince the Froggy. Oh my gosh. Prince the Froggy is a very well-regarded boss that everyone loves. Also famously MT's profile picture. So normally, uh, the way this boss goes is you just you, you take a big egg from these that they dispense out of the, uh, the the throat. You just throw them at the uvula, and you're good to go. But there is an optimal way to do this where you uh, you just you. So what the optimal way to do this is to aim an egg about as close to 45 degrees as you can, and aim it while like as far away from the uvula as possible while still getting a direct hit and if you do that perfectly you will get a five shot fight i wasn't i wasn't counting so i don't i didn't see how that was but i would guess it's probably like six or seven shots that mt got i'm really curious to see how mt will handle 
this next stage, especially the first screen, because this is a an extremely problematic stage. I'd say it's like probably like this single screen right here is like top five hardest screens in the game to get like really well. Oh, he does three eggs. Wow. Getting a little bit caught up there. Oh no. It's a really fun and cool stage when everything goes perfectly. But it's pretty rare for everything to go perfectly. So you don't usually count on it going perfectly. This is some really clean movement, especially for one hand. I am extremely impressed. <laughs> I totally forgot that MT can like actually play one-handed. And exiting 3-5, going into 3-6 where there is another maze type level. Except not really. I mean, it's just a diverting path. And I'm curious to see whether MT goes bottom route with one hand. Probably not, because it's... I, don't, I wouldn't think it would be viable to do that one-handed, because it doesn't save... For like, a huge amount of time. Yeah, he might have some experience. <laughs> But I, I have already been shocked at what MT does with one hand. Oh my gosh, he's actually going bottom route, okay. Nice! Clean egg shot. Oh, getting a little bit little bit hit by the hedgehog a little bit. Maybe Kakinyu will go top route and we'll see the uh, the difference. Because top route it's a um, it's a decision on whether you want fast and hard or easy and slow. It's 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 an age old question, especially for runners of a game, whether you go for the hard and fast route or the easy and slow route. And the time difference isn't anything too major. It's like three seconds at the absolute most. Seven, a very uh, another very hard stage to get uh, consistent at. This this stage this screen right here is really strange. Sometimes there the fish can be really odd. Sometimes there are like ten fish, but sometimes there are only like two. The MT didn't get very many fish. It was really it's so strange. You pretty much always get at least like two or three fish. But sometimes there can be like five fish. And I don't think anyone really knows. I think it's purely RNG. I don't think anyone knows how to manipulate the, the fish. I would assume egg count might have something to do with it, but MT didn't have very many eggs. Very cool little skip right there to skip ground pounding a log for about 10 minutes. Very huge time save. This has been a really clean 3-7. Can we get some cleans in the chat for this 3-7 with the the door D spawn? Let's get some cleans in the chat for that We have about one level difference, which can very much change. Especially in the later half. MT entering 3-8, one of the most egg-intensive levels in the entire game. You want to enter this level with as many eggs as possible for that that dude right there that he just shot four eggs at. Uh, Kakinyu getting a little bit stuck. Nothing too horrible, though.
Getting some eggs here for later. To perform... Uh, I believe the biggest skip in the entire game. It saves many minutes because the boss fight in this level is a very lengthy and very tedious boss. So what MT is doing right now, he's trying to stop at a point to where he can throw an egg at a ghost and while it's off screen and while he moves it'll spawn in but he won't grow to full size so he exits so that it never grows to full size could have probably explained that a little bit better but we gotta talk about this boss right here 3a this boss is extremely long it even has a different song than most of the castle bosses but what MT is doing right now is he's aiming an egg, and the the Kamek will say, "Oh my!" And then, and what that does is that that skips the entire boss, and it's, it is the biggest, it is the biggest time save in the entire game, and it was, it was intentional by Nintendo because Nintendo is very intelligent. So. I want to talk about World 4 for a bit. World 4 is, personally speaking, World 4 is easily my favorite world in the game. Easily. It is so good. And what better way to enter World 4 than to enter 4-1, my favorite level in the entire game, which I have never, I have never been able to explain why. I don't know why I love it so much, but I just really love this level. Especially the first screen. Oh my gosh. The first screen of this level is so hot. Oh, MT getting stuck a little bit immediately. Yoshi's Island is a very punishing game, in case you haven't noticed. It is extremely punishing. Sometimes you lose, like, more than 20 seconds just from getting hit. And we are about to enter the next uh, iteration of Fuzzies. So remember Fuzzies from 1-7? Well, this is, I believe, to be the scariest rendition of the Fuzzies in the game. They only appear three times, but this one is probably the hardest one in my opinion. Because you, if you uh, walk along the ground a little bit, a little bit wrong, then you can clip through the floor because this game is very well designed. We'll see if MT goes for the skip. I saw him practicing this earlier. Oh, he's going for the skip, all right. So what he's doing right now is he is skipping a Baby Mario section. And, oh, barely not making it. He's trying again, yeah. He's skipping a Baby Mario section, and this only saves, like, a second, I think. <sighs> Unfortunate. Oh my, on Kakinyu's screen. On, uh, screen. This is Kakinyu's time to catch up, I think. This is a very tough trick. I'm surprised... Well, okay, I've already said this many times, but I'm surprised the MT even does this. Man, this is just not going very well. Oh, is he, is he giving up? Yeah, I, I would have given up by then, too. That was pretty rough. So this is the intended strat. What you what MT was trying to do is he was trying to get an extended flutter into a perfect flutter off of the Shy Guy to skip this Baby Mario section. And it doesn't save very much time, as I said. It's only like a second at most. Oh my goodness. You ever just crack your neck, like, an insane amount of times, like, right? Like, just cracks like 50 times. It's so nice.
Okay, empty entering a very beloved stage by me because it is my my one world record in the game is on this level and I will hold this level dear to my heart for the rest of my life probably. So it, it is a very fun level to get to get right. It's just not many egg shots, but it's a lot of really cool jumps. Ooh. Oh, I cannot believe that egg hit the first piranha. That looked so late. MT getting a little bit hit there. That's fine though, just yeah. Pretty quick pretty good recovery. These recoveries have been pretty good, other than the the three one incident. Oh, is he gonna go for the Baxter? Imagine. Oh, didn't go for the Baxter. It's the easiest one. Come on. I'm sure MT could have done it. I never really realized it, but the, the first half of World 4 is so good. Definitely my favorite, like, half world in the game. 4-3 is another very clean level. Pretty quick, too. Not a too long of a level. You can do a shell jump here, and then I'll save, like, riding on, this, on these balloons. These balloons are a little bit slow. But the shell jump is really hard, so I don't blame MT for not going for it. Yes, MT is running with one hand. Nice, nice. I really respect the one-handed. I have enormous respect. Oof. Unfortunate shy guy right there. We might see some lag. Never mind, we're not gonna see any lag, probably. The ending of this screen can lag a lot if you have too many eggs. Seeing a little bit of lag, it can lag like an insane amount if you have too many eggs. So what about a one level lead over Kakinu? Entering one of the longest levels in the game, and also widely regarded to be probably the hardest one to get, like, really good at. I, I think I would agree. Personally, I think 6-4 is harder. Just because of the salvo and lava skip. And that's not including 5-4, by the way. Because 5-4 doesn't count, because 5-4 skip is task only. Oh, MT with the, 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 the bird frame, as, as Supa called it. I think it was Supa that called it that, at least. So, this level has a very intricate order. Uh, we, as speedrunners, want to get through the level as quickly as possible, obviously. So what we do is we do the most egg intensive section first, which is this top right room. And the reason we do that is because you need four keys to complete the level. And whenever you have a key, you, you, uh, that takes away one of your egg slots. So you, whenever you have three keys and you're doing the last room, you don't want to have a lot of it. You don't want to, you don't need many eggs. You want to not be needing that many eggs rather. So we do this room first, then we do the bottom right room to get some more eggs for the next room that we do. Will MT go for bucket skip, <laughs> perhaps? So we do this this room next to get another to get some more eggs to max out our egg counter for the next room. And also most and also because of uh, movement between the rooms. 
Nice. About to see another perfect flutter, maybe. Although this this perfect flutter barely saves time. Yeah, he's not going for it. But will he go bottom left or bottom? Yeah, bottom left, top left. Oh, he's going bottom. Is he gonna go for bucket skip? Oh man, imagine, imagine. No. Oh. You had me excited there, man. Come on. Yeah, you did the bucket skip skip, which personally is the one that I opt for in my runs. I usually opt for bucket skip skip. I can you not that far behind anymore. This level, I feel like, would be a level that is very... You're, like, extremely handicapped with one hand in this level. Because it is a very high APM level. This is my personal favorite room. I love top left room. Oh, that cactus can be a bit of a jerk at times. Like it is for MT. Oh, Kakinyu. Struggling a little bit. I didn't I didn't see what happened, but I had to take the cookie. Nice. That was a cool egg shot. So this is probably I think most runners would agree, at least I would say, it, is probably the jankiest boss of the game against milled. Mild the Marching, I think is his full name. There are a couple there are a couple ways to do this boss fight. But generally, most runners go for I believe the double double. I usually go for the triple, but I usually fail it. I haven't gotten the triple in so long. I might learn double double. We'll see what MT does though. There's also a really cool egg shot you can do at the end of this boss fight. Ah, uh, that's the jankiness. Very cool hitbox. MT just doing them individually, I don't blame him. MT better do this cool egg shot though. Oh, he tried. I, I, I respect the effort. Nice. Clean 4-4 four four from MT. Four dash five Chomp Rock Zone is a very broken level in the speedrunning. In terms of that, we very much do not do the intended strat. Normally what you do is you, you push that chomp rock down there and you escort it through the entire section. But, thankfully Nintendo had the foresight to not put infinite walls that go off screen. We just go over the, go over the post. This is kind of looking like how I do 4 or 5. This is insane. Nice, the melon bug speed strat. <laughs> Love to see it. There is a shell jump you can do there that I like to go for because again, I'm a Mario Maker player and I am legally bound to do every shell jump. But most runners don't do that. I don't blame them, it barely saves time. And it's also really hard. It's probably the hardest shell jump in the game. I would say so, at least. Four dash six, a very, uh, very. It can go very wrong. 
but when it goes right, it usually goes very, really, really well. So we'll see how MT fares in this stage. Oh yeah, two one. I forgot about the two one shot. We don't count that one though because that one's ridiculous. Clean. Some sometimes the fi there's a fish in that room that can be really trolly. So most most runners shoot like an anticip anticipatory neutral, as he did like right there. These crabs can be jerks at times. This is what I mean, if it goes wrong, it generally goes pretty dang wrong. And this last screen, there are about a thousand different ways to do this last screen. And none of them are really faster than any other strat. It's a really cool screen. <laughs> I I don't think MT is gonna go for chicken Baxter because he has four eggs. And I don't think I don't think the chickens spawn if you have four eggs. Which honestly kind of an L, not gonna lie, but Whatever, I would be happy to be proven wrong. Four dash seven is uh, the infamous Chicken Baxter level. Oh, he he burned in that. He might be going. He might be going for Chicken Baxter. Oh, he's going for the Chicken Baxter. Let's go, MT. Okay, I love talking about Chicken Baxter. So I don't exactly know the tech, the like super technical details of Chicken Baxter, and I'm not going to pretend to. But I do know that like the very basic level of it is that there are every sprite that you see right now has an ID, and what MT is doing is he is going to. Uh, maybe? I don't- I don't actually know how this works. Uh, he's- he's wants to- what he wants to do is he wants to set the ideas correctly and then aim this chicken and- Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You- yeah, you have to get first try gate hack, right? I think. At least he tried. I really massively appreciate it respect the attempt that was made so what that would accomplish is that whenever you, you, well you okay I didn't quite finish explaining what you want to do is you want to aim the chicken and re and release you want to cancel the aim at the same time that you enter the goal ring and that will bring the chicken into the next level I really hope we see a chicken back for some time in this in this tournament And what that would accomplish is that for this level, against Hook Bill the Koopa, what you can do is you can uh, take the chicken into the boss, and the game does not know what to do when Hook Bill is facing a chicken. So the chicken just deals damage every frame that is on Hook Bill. So in four frames, it would deal the damage required to do a ground pound, and you could just repeat that three times. And it saves like 10 seconds or so. MT, what he just tried to do there is he tried to shoot an egg at the cloud to explode the cloud. And clouds have a very weird property whenever they're off, whenever they're at the edge of the screen. And in that case, what it does is that um, it would make the goal ring kind of not be a or a mid ring not be a mid ring. Like it would give you the stars, but it wouldn't make the checkpoint until after or unless it was on screen at the end of the animation. Empty gathering some eggs because it's optimal to enter this boss fight with with uh, four eggs. Taking the mid ring, very smart. You never know what can happen in, in the hook bill fight. 
Another very janky boss fight at times. I don't understand this fog. I really hope someone in chat can explain it, but something about this fog doing this kind of weird movement that doesn't look fast is actually faster. I don't understand it, but I hope someone does and can explain it to me. You want to be as much in the middle as possible, I think. Alright, thanks, Volpe. Come on, Kakinu. You, you, you've practiced this earlier. You can do it. You can do it, Kakinu. Let's go! Oh, you're so good, Kakinu. No blast off from MT, Sag. I can't imagine doing blast off with one hand, though. That'd be unbelievable. It's screen positioning. Once the fog is on screen, the boss is on a timer to appear. Okay. Clean one-handed boss from MT. This has been a pretty good run for MT. Oh boy, what do we want to talk about for this role transition? Another 40 seconds of time to kill. Two hundred second cutscene, oh my gosh. It just gets longer and longer. MT is now entering the sixth best world in the game. Kakinu getting a little bit close to death, but should be fine. He just takes it safe. Five one. A another one of those things can go extremely poorly if things go wrong. But it feels very good if you get it right. So MT is riding this cloud and uh, Nintendo also had the foresight to make the intended route slower, because Nintendo is very intelligent. Oh, MT only rode it for the first cloud. Is this faster, actually? I heard one time that no cloud is faster if you're like a TAS. But I can't think that this would be faster in the, like, in RTA setting. Oh no! Oh no, Kakinu! <laughs> no! Oh, I didn't I didn't see what happened. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, he didn't get the key. Oh, that's so sad. Empty shooting in the icicles, nice. This screen right here, this is a, this is a very deadly screen. Things can often snowball like crazy on this screen. MT being the god of Yoshi that he is, does not have that issue. But this screen can go very poorly. And it's at the very end of a level where you skip a mid ring. So it can be a little rough, very rough actually, if you die. So we're, we might see another sprite overflow glitch in this level. Uh, in the second screen of the level, you can spawn like a thousand stars. Oh, I, I think he has too few eggs there. Oh, he's taking the snowball! Let's go! Oh, the snowball. The swag ball. Man, I did not know the snowball actually got that big. I've never taken the snowball in my life. Yeah, I don't think MT has enough eggs for this. So what MT is attempting right now is he's attempting to spit the penguins at the star clouds to spawn the stars, and that would hopefully despawn the mid ring. However, you need to have a lot of eggs in order for it to work. 
because eggs are also a fright. Nice, MT doing the 100% route. Nice, that's like cleaner than I usually do it. <laughs> oh, that was so close. He hit like the corner of that penguin. That was crazy. Kakin, you now out of World 4, entering along with MT, the sixth best world in the game. And the sixth most fun world. Oh boy. Oh boy, 5-3. There are a lot of things I can say about 5-3, but I'll just say this. It is my least favorite level in Warpless, but I won't be too harsh on it. It is a, a very hard level. It is probably... This is another one of... This is probably the hardest level in the game to like learn when you're first starting out, I would think, at least. Uh, the, the third screen of this level is, in my opinion, the biggest ass-clenching screen of the entire game. This screen's pretty fun, though, I will say. I do like this screen a lot. If things go right, that is. Nice. Clean. And then this this screen, oh my gosh. This screen is the sole reason I hate this level. And he's doing it okay, never mind. I I just in action commentator cursed him, but he was doing it cleaner than I usually do it. This right here. This right here, biggest ass puncher of the entire game. MT doing it very safely, I don't blame him. Dying there is extremely costly. This is a really unfortunate level to die on. Oh yeah, this level has birds! Birds are so awesome, especially in this game. Empty entering a very cool skiing section. Another good part of... 5-3. Rare good part of 5-3. Fun fact, I believe 5-3 is the, the... The one level in the game where you collect the most amount of points. I think. Maybe 6-8 is more, but you don't really... You don't really see the score screen in 6-8. MT doing the optimal uh, self-clobbering. Oh, I didn't see what happened to Kakinu. Apparently he got really close to death. I need to be I need to do better at paying attention to both screens. I'm kinda just eyeing MT screen down. Okay. It is time to talk about 5-4. It is the commentator's favorite part of the run to talk about. It's time to hype up 5-4 skip, because apparently MT does this. So 5-4 skip is a monstrously difficult skip that saves about a minute and 24 seconds. I, I was on the wiki a bit earlier, so I saw the time save. It saves about 80 seconds or so. And it is insanely hard. I've tried it for about maybe 400 attempts and I have not gotten it yet. I don't know, someone in chat earlier said that MT does 5-4 skip with one hand. Which would be just fucking insane. I'm sorry for the language, but that would be insane. So this, this skip, I mean, I'm not really one to talk about it, because I haven't done it, but it is, trust me when I say it is one of the hardest speedrun tricks in all of speedrunning. It is so difficult, and it, it is difficult to overstate just how difficult it is. MT having a little bit of trouble, but speedy recovery as always. 
Okay, so if MT, I'm gonna, I'm willing to bet this. If MT gets five four skip first try, I will subscribe to Volpe on Twitch. So MT, if you're gonna go for it, you better get it, or else Volpe is gonna miss out on three dollars. Let's see if he goes for it. Oh, I don't think he's gonna go for it. Badge, is Volpe missing out? Volping out, Volping. Volpe missing out on three dollars, Sage. I was really hoping MT would at least try it. I mean, like... Oh, Kakinu died. I didn't see that. Oh, that's so sad. A really cool section of the game. Very cool section. Pawns are being bullies. Yeah, figures. just don't even know what to talk about <laughs> like I really I really wish I had prepared something to talk about for this because I was expecting him to go for it <laughs> I have no clue what to talk about here so how's everyone doing today everyone enjoying this race I, I oh yeah I should come take Takinio I'm stupid can you making it to the the ski section as MT did a bit before? The ski section is it's pretty cool. <laughs> the second screen is fully auto, like you, you can just play your hands off the controller. I my personal decision is to get a drink of water during the second screen. It's a pretty good pretty good spot to get a drink of water in. All right, MT entering. MT entering the boss fight against Sluggy the Unshaven. So what MT is going to do, similar to the Ghost in 3:8, he's going to go off screen. Going to go, going to go off screen. He's going to neutral an egg, and he's going to go forward again. And the goal here, he's not going to neutral. Never mind. He's the goal here is to spawn Sluggy back in. As you are moving to the, to where the egg that is being thrown will be at his heart, and he's doing it really well, actually. Nice. Okay. Clean. Such an easy boss fight. Kakinu with the bonus! Let's go! Oh man. Oh, is it roulette? Oh, I love roulette. Roulette's my favorite. Let's see how Kakinu does on the roulette. Oh, they're matching, so they're gonna get plus one, I think. Oh, plus zero. Unfortunate. Oh! <laughs> oh, they have to count up nine lives. That is so unfortunate. MT very clean through the first screen of 5-5. Five, five. Will MT go for helicopter skip or skip skip? He's going for the helicopter skip. Oh man. 
Oh man, this is this is awesome. Oh, that might be a little low. Oh no! Oh, that's unfortunate. MT taking a death. He's going for it again. Oh no! No! Oh, this is a little sad. Surely he gets it this time, right? They say third time's the charm. Oof. Is that good still? I actually don't really know how this, this trick goes. Is that good? I think that's good still. I think he's got it. Nice! Oh, wait, hold. Not home yet. There we go. All right. Good job, MT. This is, yeah, it definitely saved time. This is another very cool screen. Oh, he missed the switch. Oh! Oh my gosh! Oh, that was so close! And swiftly making his way through 5-5 to enter. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, now I'm like super not gonna know what to talk about because Kakimi was about to get to the, 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 the lift and MT's gonna be in 5-6. This is like super nap time. Everyone take a nap really quick. It'll get interesting in about three minutes. Unless Kakinyu surprises us all with a 5-4 skip. Icterus with one bit saying, save the animals. We will put your donation towards the incentive to save the animals and lose the frames. Oh, MT's gonna show off some swag at least. Sag, MT losing two frames on the on the goal screen for this level. Oh, Colthor with two bits saying kill the animals. Ooh. We've got we've got a we got a donation war going. Yeah, honestly, this level seems like it would be so good without the auto scroller. Same with uh, six five. These levels will be these levels would be so cool without the auto scrollers. It's just that Nintendo is very intelligent and makes games very well. Hopefully, we see some chicken swag, or maybe MT will go for the rare and elusive five six chicken Baxter. <laughs> I have no clue if that's even possible, but he might shock us all right now. Everyone, yeah, everyone get your dance emotes out. Hold on, I'm gonna send an emote in Twitch chat real quick. There we go. Come on, MT, show some, chick show some chicken swag. Yeah, th this is like the one of like the really long auto scores I don't really mind that much. Oh, I'm gonna get a drink of water really quick while I wait for things to get interesting on Kakinu's on Kakinu's screen. Sorry if you heard that. You probably heard that. I'm sorry. MT no longer losing two frames on the on the score screen. You love to see it. MT developing a chicken collection. Yes, it's it's all worth it, Volpe. It's all worth it in the end.
Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it, chat? Kakinu going for the fast slug. Oh, he does play on hasty, I think. I didn't. I I wasn't paying enough attention. I didn't see whether he switched to hasty or not in the early game. Taking that mid ring, losing losing even more frames. Just just not a good player, I guess. I'm just kidding. That that's like the one mid ring I usually take in the entire game. Because I am terrified of dying in this level. Ooh, that could have been really rough. Narrowly dodging the piranhas. Huh? What the heck? <laughs> nice, nice hitboxes. Kakin, you making it through this slucky fight? Nice. Entering 5-7, we have another one of the hardest levels in the game to get good at, I think. It's really scary. It's one of the scariest level in the levels in the game, definitely. You start out going left. It is one of two levels in the game, I think, where you start going left. The other one being 2-7, of course. Everyone loves going left. Oh! Oof, that was a little scary, MT. It's okay, he's just- he's just making things interesting, right? Oh, close call for Kakinu! Oh, MT going for the cool strat. Nice. Is that a perfect jump? I think that was a perfect jump. Kakinu going for the elusive helicopter skip skip. Ooh, so close. That was very spooky. That is like, I, I, I always say that is the most ass clenching two seconds of the entire game. Dealing with that green piranha. Generally speaking, with these falling platforms, we want to enter as close to one side as the other. As, oh no, MT! It's okay, because he got the mid ring. We generally want to enter as far to the left and exit as far to the right as possible. Because of the aforementioned well designed game that this game is. Uh, I believe it's like the fourth frame that you're on the. The, uh, the platform, it will start falling, and along with that, it makes Yoshi in the air for a very small amount of time. And if you jump in that very small amount of time, you're just not going to jump, because this game is very well designed. Is MT PB Pace? I'm, I don't know. I don't have his stream open. No? Okay. MT entering 5-8, the very wonderful boss, Raphael the Raven. To those who saw my race on Monday, I had very I had a very awesome raft fight, so we'll hope we'll hope MT's raft fight goes better than mine did. I think this is my favorite boss too, like conceptually at least. Or in like in terms of like the atmosphere of the boss. It's just so cool. I love I love this. If only it weren't RNG. <laughs> MT getting hit a little bit by <laughs> MT having a very a very awesome time with this cannon. 
Those are probably my second least favorite enemies in the game. I really don't like those cannon dudes. They make no sense, their hitboxes are stupid. Raphael the penguin, yep. Nice. Making it in the pipe. Ooh, this is a really rough this is a really rough screen to get. Perfect jumps can often lead to your doom. And when things go wrong in this room, they go really wrong. Kaboombas? <laughs> okay, I like them a little bit more now. Just because they're called Kaboombas. MT entering Raphael the Raven, and what we are all rooting for is for Raphael to go left. So everyone, get your get your praying emotes out because we want we want Raf to go left or stay still. That'd be crazy if he stays still. There's like a one in something hundred chance, like 250, 256, maybe two fifty six, maybe one twenty eight. One of those. It's rare, but it happens at times. Nice, it's going to the left. What? That didn't hit. That looks so good. Nice. Not the best RNG after the first one, but it was tolerable. Went better than my Raph fight, at least. Yeah, very safe, but can't blame him. Dead bird is dead. Unfortunate. Now he's a constellation. So does anyone know, so, so this whole game kind of sets up a whole atmosphere of like a day. Like the first couple worlds are during the day, world 4 is during uh, sunset, and world 5 is at night, and also sunset. Where does Yoshi go? <laughs> like actually though, where does he go? He kind of just goes into the sky. He goes to bed. So are you saying that world 6 all happens in a dream? The moon? Well, maybe. Valley of Bowser? Isn't that a Mario World 1 thing? Isn't the final world back in called, like, the Valley of Bowser? Kind of just transports into something. And 6 1, my third favorite level of the game. Very good level. It's so satisfying to do well. This is Bowser's turf. Fair enough, yeah. And it, it is still sunset, I guess. But like, how is- or is it sunrise? Maybe it's sunrise. Maybe- maybe the whole night has already passed. Maybe- maybe Yoshi's Island gets like 22 hours of sunlight a day. A cool tongue right there. Oh, hold. No, Kakin, you. Oh, that's so sad. Pretty sure it's canonically not Yoshi's Island in World 6. That's actually really interesting. Six one, especially this last screen is this last screen can be really treacherous. It's really satisfying though. I'm a huge fan of this level. Ooh, hold. There we go. All right, MT's out of six one now. Shadow Roller from Link to the Past. I never played Link to the Past, actually. I'm not really a not really a Zelda kind of person. 
<gasps> Wait, hold. Nice. Good job, Pecky. That was a cool save. Six two or another very treacherous level. The first half of World Six is just extremely treacherous and very scary. There aren't really any like major skips, other than six four. But uh, it's just oh, Akinu. Oh, unfortunate. At least he got the mid ring. Yeah, the first four levels of World 6 are... I think a lot of runners consider it to be like the heart, like... Oh no! No, MT! Did he get the mid-ring? I didn't see. Yeah, he did, alright. Yeah, most runners consider it to be like... Like, the gauntlet before the end of the game. Ooh, that was a tight jump. Aw, oh, unfortunate. Nice. And we now enter into the the last required Baby Mario section of the game, which I believe is like... Oh! <laughs> I forgot that can happen. That was cool. Oh, I am team missing the flutter. Unf wait, hold? Okay, you made it. Nice. Oh, wait. Is no! No! Oh, it's all falling apart! Will we get it this time? Oh, a little bit too late. Unf wait. I always get a little nervous when people go for the flutter strat and then miss. And they have to make it to the next star in time. It's always stressful. Nice, this should clear it easily. Wait, this might be a bonus. Is this gonna be a bonus? Oh no. That was bottom left thought? What? I don't I do not understand this game at times. Six three, the the last of the three fuzzy stages. We we to, we have to do a little bit of venturing before we can get to the fuzzies. Will MT be fuzzyless? And here we go, the fuzzies. Let's go. Ooh. 15 frames, 30 frames lost. Nice. Is that faster than fluttering over the gap? I didn't know that. <laughs> clean, very clean. Because MT didn't go for 5-4 skip, I will I will give him a, re a redemption opportunity. If he lands lava skip, first try, I will sub to Volpe. 6-4 is, in my opinion at least, the hardest level in the game. But I'm like, probably the only person that thinks that. Case in point, it's impossible. Literally impossible level. Shiggy designed this level to be not possible to humans. Oh, Kakinu having a rough time with rapid scenes. I wasn't. I needed to do. I'm sorry. I'm not doing a good job at paying attention to both screens. Having a rough time, it seems. That's okay. It happens. I mean, 
It definitely happened to me. It very much happened to me in my race. I'm, ex I'm excited to see how this goes. Clean! Hold on. I gotta put a clean in shot for that one. Nice. That was so cool. I hate that Salvo so much. That Salvo is actually impossible. It is insane. Packing you also entering World 6 now. Oh, MT. Struggling with this perfect flutter. He's trying to get an extended flutter off those ghost guys, and then perfect fluttering right after to clear the pillar that is in the way. Because... Once again, Shiggy had the foresight to uh, make walls not extended to infinity when they're above the screen. Ooh. Will he go for a lava skip? Oh, he's going for... Never mind. Oh, that fake out. Come on, man. That was such a fake out. Volpe once again missing out on $3. eggs does he have? Oh, he's a lot of eggs. Okay. We'll see what he does. There's a there's a setup that you can do. There's a setup you can do where you can kill the boss in four eggs. And it's really swift. But uh, MT is probably going to go for the more safe five shot strat where you just literally tap A five times. Yeah, he's going for the five shot strat. Very cool boss. Thank you, Colthor, for the three bits. Our our prize pool is now at one hundred dollars and seven cents. Oh man, it's time for time for another nap, everyone. So MT is gonna enter six five. It's time to look at Kakinu's screen. Six five, I believe, is the longest auto scroller in the game. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it's the longest one, though. So we're just gonna not pay attention to MT for a while while he does some swag, maybe? I don't know, but we're gonna look at Kakinu. Oh, almost the bonus! Almost the bonus on Kakinu's screen. No, I, I mean, I mean, just this first screen is the longest on a score in the game. Maybe, maybe six, maybe five, six is longer. Kakinu in six two. Once again, a very treacherous stage. Gotta go in the hundo door. Yeah, we'll see if MT does the hundo door. <laughs> Kakinu struggling a little bit with those those boxers. I don't know what they're called. I just call them boxers like the underwear because they smell like smelly underwear at times oh the cool ground pound from MT let's see how these stairs go for Kakinu nice that was clean electricians <laughs> Can you now entering the Baby Mario section? Hopefully not dying like MT did to catch up a little bit. <laughs> that was so close. What? What is the strat? I'm assuming that was a mistake, but I don't really know what he was going for there.
Excuse me, sorry about that. MT intentionally taking damage for the swag. I didn't know you could ground pound on those chomp rocks like that. That's so cool, actually. All right, Kakinyu now in 6-3. We'll see how he fares with the fuzzies. Oh, hold. Oh, no! Oh, that is so sad. Those little bouncy ball bouncing things are a little trolly at times. Oh, MT going for the, the swag rock. Never mind. I, I, is he going for swag rock? I don't know the setup for it. No, I think he just kind of got rid of it. Not going. Oh, no. Oh, no. Kakinyu's falling apart. Oh, this is so sad. All right. Come on. Prage for the auto scroll skip. Let's see how many tries it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh man. Seven, eight, nine. Kakinu getting fuzzied, unfortunately. Ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve tries. Solid. Six three is really rough. Like actually, six three is such a rough stage. It is so hard, and like it's it's all just done before it begins at times. Okay, MT is now out of six five at long last, and we will hopefully see a one-handed rock list. <laughs> okay, if MT gets rock list. We'll say three tries. I will subscribe to Volpe. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, unfortunate. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I hate this trick so much. Fourteen, fifteen. I'm so glad that Seuss found that rock setup. I love Seuss rock. What are we on? Seventeen now? Eighteen, I think. I'm gonna stop counting, I think. Twenty, probably. I've lost count. I'm not good at counting. I can only count to like three. Twenty-two. I <laughs> I need to stop talking while counting. I'm gonna give up. I give up on counting. Oh, he's, he's cutting his losses, I guess. Going for the rock. Not doing the Seuss rock, it seems. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, that is so sad. MT now doing the intended rock. Oh, he's just gonna die, I think. Fair enough. Honestly, it probably would be faster to just die than get the key intentionally. Cole Thor with the 23 bits for each attempt. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I wish I knew more languages. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Ah, oh, giving up after twenty. Going for the rock. We'll see if he does the Seuss rock. Oh wait, is he doing it? Ah, come on, MT. You gotta learn the Seuss Rock at least. 
please. Rage. Yay, he caught it. Oh, Kaki and you, I think failing a lava skip attempt, I think. I wasn't paying attention. I'm, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm just not doing well looking at both screens. Oh, Kakinyu going for lava skip again. You know what? If Kakinyu gets it this try, I don't think he's going to get it, actually. I think he's too low now. I was going to say if Kakinyu gets it, I was going to sub the Volpi, but I think he's too low now. Oh, so sad. Is this going to be a bonus? Will this be the third 6-6 six, six bonus of the tournament? Nope. Kakinyu cutting his losses and taking the log, fair enough. Oh, come on, Kakinyu, it's faster to be on the left side. Oh. Alright, if MT gets 6-7 skip, I will spend my entire checking account on gift subs. <laughs> Six Seven has some pretty cool camera manipulation. Uh, I think I, I don't. I already forgot, but I don't know if MT got the first one or not. MT not going for this one. Fair enough. It's kind of treacherous. See what Kakinyu does with the boss. Going for Oh no, he doesn't have enough eggs! Oh, this is a little this is a little rocky. Tap tap is a boss that you very much want to get the strat for. You don't get the strat, things can go very awry. Nice. MT not going for 6-7 skip, that's like... You'd have to give me money for that, man, like, come on. Very cool, oh my gosh, what are the chances? Now we're in another double auto-scroller. How's everyone's day going? MT bullying this tap tap. Oh, oh it's so sad. That, that was so sad. I'm, I think I might cry from that. MT almost at long last exiting the lift in 6 7. Hopefully, we see a cactus gate hack. If he gets Cactus Gate Hack on the first try, I will sub to Volpe. Because I feel bad at this point. <laughs> oh, the despawn. I've gotten that a couple times. That's rough. Come on, MT. Let's see a Cactus Gate Hack. First try. Let's go. Volpe finally getting his three dollars. Wow, thank you, Fiona1020, for the subscription at tier one. Put that into the prize pool. MT entering the final level of the game, 6-8, which fittingly with the name of the level takes about six to eight minutes to complete. That's true, by the way, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's actually true. 
if MT gets door three, I'll get five subs. I'm on door three. Let's pray for a door three. Oh. You got door four, Sag. No content. And once again, we experience a double auto scroller. This is the final auto scroller of the game. And it is definitely probably the worst one. At least in my opinion, it is. Cold Floor putting up 50 bits for TIA. I mean, you know what? I'll put up 50 bits for no TIA. So, we, so we're getting 50 bits no matter what. The TIA bid war. Alright, oh, I, oh no, Kakinu. I forgot to start counting the attempts. But he's a... Uh, nice, there we go. I don't know how many attempts that took, but that looked pretty good. This room is now in subscriber-only mode. Oh, we're getting spammed by bots. Wait, what the heck? That is so many bots. <laughs> I didn't even know it could be that many in a row. Sag, Volpe, can they're not canceling. Volpe, uh, restricting his chat. Sag, only for a little bit of robot action. If MT gets that mid ring, I'll give two bits. Never mind. Entering the Bowser fight, we have um, a very awesome. Bowser fight coming away. Wait, I can type in the. Oh, never mind. It's no longer sub only mode. Let's check out this Bowser fight. Oh, missing the first ground pound, but it's okay. Didn't get trolled by Boozer. Huh? That can happen? I didn't know that Bowser would like. I know you can make Bowser go the other way. Oh, Bowser doing a little bit of trolling. Nice, the TIA. If MT misses zero egg shots, I will give 1,000 bits. One thousand bits for no missed egg shots. Oh, Kakinu is struggling a little bit with this this uh, ghost guy right here. Nice, okay. Oh, I, did, I totally never, I never thought to do a double, a double ghost guy strat. Also, yeah, post your jam emotes of your choice, whatever, whichever one works for you. Nice, good start. That might be a little low. Oh, so close. Oh, that might be a bit high. Let's go, I don't have to spend $10. I can be a cheapskate. No 1,000 bits for you. Wait, did I say 1,000 subs? I meant 1,000 bits. <laughs> okay. You know what, if he doesn't miss any more egg shots, I'll give 100 bits. Nice, okay, by the way, I have no clue how to give bits. So that is a, a, uh, we have a winner. MT, with a time of two hours, 
one minute and some some amount of seconds. Two hours, one minute, and seven seconds. We have a winner. MT will go on to face Zeus in the round of eight. I have no clue how to do this. No, can't keep you. Oh, that's so sad. How do I do this? I've I've never done this before. Wait, wait, what am I doing? Um uh, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of a grandma. I don't I don't know how to do bits. I've never given bits before. Um, the reset. Let's hope Kakini doesn't struggle as much as he has been. There we go. Okay. I got it figured out. I totally missed a lot of action, but whatever. No! Oh no! <laughs> the reset again! Oh, wait, is he DNFing? Is this about to be a DNF? This might be a DNF from Kakinyu. Unfortunately. That was a good effort, Kakinyu. I really respect the effort. All right. Well, how about that race, guys? That was a really good race. I really hope that my commentary was good, and I hope that all of you have a wonderful day. And enjoy the credit song for a bit.